at Turner Stadium, TexanLive.com. Talk of the tailgate. And we've got a good one here tonight. It's going to be brought to you by Texan Drive, that dealership, GMC Buick, right over there at Will Clayton in 59. If you need to stop by there, see head coach Burt Brocker, pick yourself up something nice. They treat you better. I'm here right now uh, with, with Memorial Herman. Uh, Dr. Sean, we're here with you. And uh, we're going to talk about some reoccurring injuries this, tonight as we get later on in the football season. Uh, we're going to talk about as the kids move into basketball and even injuries late in the season. Uh, the Houston Texans have a guy hurt right now that uh, is having some problems with the, with the hamstring injury. Let's talk a little bit about that, like the hamstring for number one. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, nowadays kids go from one sport to the next and there's really no off season. So we start to see these type of injuries, you know, with it, whether it's muscle or tendon, and it's just an overuse thing where they don't get a break and a chance to recuperate. What, now, I know the weight training's a lot better than it ever was before. Is that a factor? They still need that rest period. Absolutely. They still need a period for their body to recover and recuperate because you know, these sports are demanding, whether it's football, basketball, soccer, volleyball. You know, these kids practice sometimes five to six times a week, and your body needs a break from that. Do you think there's an age group? I mean, when it starts, say, a 14-year-old on the freshman team, and then a 17, is there any difference, or it's still, we got to have that break? Well, definitely. I mean, the kids are growing, so they're more prone to these type of injuries. So it's definitely in this age group, middle school and high school. Okay, now what, let's talk about some prevention and let's talk about specific injuries. What do you see the most of a reoccurring injury? Obviously the first thing that comes to my mind is hamstring. Yeah, so hamstrings are a big one. The other ones that we see pretty commonly are, are tendon injuries. So overuse uh, injuries of the tendon where it's just a chronic repetitive use and that, you know, eventually it, it stops you from playing because it's injured. We, now the knee tendon, the shoulder, I, I, obviously baseball probably shoulder is very right, common. Yeah, absolutely. And depending on the sport, you know, for overhead throwing like baseball or swimming, see more shoulder issues. But, you know, for running sports like track, football, basketball, you see more knee issues. Okay. Now every kid wants to be out there. He wants to go from one sport to the next. The coach wants the big dog out there to play. What do we need to do besides just take time off? Is there anything that we can send a kid from sport to sport that that he still can participate and not harm himself? Well, absolutely. And I mean, you know, kids can do that. They can go from sport to sport. But if they're having pain and they're injured, they have to take a break. So they got to rehab and make sure things are improving not just work through that pain, especially early on in the season. And I guess there's a difference between being hurt and just having pain, right? Absolutely. And the tendon, I'm assuming, is hurt. Right. And that, you know, that really involves uh, the coaches and the athletic trainers at the high school level. So the, the athletes really have to be good about letting people know if, if things are hurt or they're injured, they got to let someone know. Now, I guess the hamstring, there's no hiding that because you just flat can't perform with a hamstring. I guess a tendon, a kid's going to play as long as he can play. Let, let's say he continues to play. If he would have stopped a week into it and had treatment, is his recovery faster and he's back in the game faster? Typically it is, yeah. And that's something, I mean, you can work with it to, to an extent, but if you continue to ignore that, it will delay that healing and it can take a, definitely a significantly longer period. Let's take a tendon, for instance. What treatment do, uh, let's say my tendon hurts, I come in there, I've only been injured for a week. What treatment would you first start? Well, number one is to stop doing the activity that's causing it to hurt. So whether it's running, jumping, you know, lifting weights, we got to back off of that or modify it where it's not causing the pain. And then some of the simple stuff, you know, rest, ice, compression. So those normal, you know, mainstay type treatments. And then the other thing, you know, there's some treatments that the athletic trainers do at the school, whether it's ultrasound or, or a TENS unit. So those modalities can help with blood flow and facilitate the healing process. Now we're seeing a bigger, stronger, faster athlete right now, and we're starting to see a lot more injuries in the bigger, stronger athletes right now. Is that just because 
the body's bearing more weight on, or is just the kids are faster, stronger now? Well, it's a combination, definitely. You know, the, the muscle unit ends in that tendon, so the bigger the muscle, the more force it's going to be generated. So, you know, when those kids are, are doing that repetitively, it puts a strain on that tendon. We're gonna look, looking at some big, fast ones out there right now we're going to see play tonight. I really appreciate you coming by. We really appreciate everything Memorial Herman does for not just the Humble Independent School District, for athletes in general, and what I've learned from visiting with you guys. Memorial Herman is, is just such a true partner here in the Humble ISD and at TexanAlive.com, and we really appreciate everything you well, do. Yeah, it's our pleasure. I mean, we, we enjoy being out here and love taking care of you know the, the student athletes. Right, we appreciate it, and we're going to be right back.